John, during all of this today, um, President Trump tweeted, so horrible to watch the massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Perhaps flying water tankers could be used to put it out. Must act quickly. In all of this, uh, what was happening today, uh, obviously the French Civil Defense Agency was angry enough to respond in English. Um, well, they just they tweeted in English this after that. Hundreds of firemen of the Paris Fire Brigade are doing everything they can to bring the terrible fire under control. All means are being used except for water bombing aircrafts, which, if used, could lead to the collapse of the entire structure of the cathedral. Now, obviously, John, I'm not asking you to weigh in on the politics of the president weighing in with his personal opinion on a fire or their decision to respond. But they obviously wanted to dismiss what he said, suggesting this flying, flying water tankers. Why would that not have worked? Well, I think for the reasons they said, you may uh, have a load uh, that hits the building. The water has a you know weight, and it can come down with significant force and cause a collapse. That's unintended. Um, that's not the traditional way in which we would fight a fire like this. Um, that's more for forest fires, you know, uh, where the damage that that may incur mm. is not not critical to kind of keeping the structure as much intact as possible. You've got over six hours so far of, of the fire, and obviously you have parts, as you can see from those first internal pictures, where it is still, uh, you know, whatever that structure may be that we are looking at in some of those, but completely red with the heat. What makes it so difficult to put out a fire like this one? Well, the, uh, <clears throat> the age of the building, uh, the type of construction, the components that it's made from mostly uh, non-combustible surrounding exterior, that's still what's remaining. Uh, all the roof supports, all the interior uh, framing is all wood. Very dry, burns very well, and you saw how quickly the fire spread, and that's what you're seeing as what's left and is probably going to burn for a while until uh, it either, and, either extinguishes itself or the water does. And, and the, the, the question on this one, you obviously, you know, the point you're pointing out, there, there's so much wood in there, but... You have all of this stone and obviously 850-year-old structure of, of, you know, bits and pieces constructed over hundreds of years. But, I mean, you're talking about an incredible amount of stone and stone that we don't, I would imagine they fully know exactly how secure or insecure it is, given the age of the building. Well, uh, before the fire, of course, it was probably very secure, uh, probably almost as secure as when it was built in, in whatever chronological order it came. Uh, the fire does change that, right? We, we have some serious structural damage. We have some loads placed on the structure that we weren't intending, so we don't know what was weakened and what wasn't. Uh, that's going to come after the fire is extinguished. From what I've seen uh, looking at the internet, I see some... Uh, uh, it looks like the exterior structure will remain intact. There could be localized collapses, inward or outward, uh, depending upon how the heat has affected that. But it looks like most of it the masonry part will stand. And then, of mm. course, uh, whoever is technologically capable of determining what's needed to make sure it's structurally sound to rebuild will have to do that.